Okay, on a Friday night, uh, the kids are in bed, and Mary Lee and I are eating popcorn and watching a flick. Okay, Robert Trudeau. Oh, this is a... Uh, oh, uh, let's see. I was... Uh, Oh, I grew up in northern Vermont. I, I told you that already. Uh, and my dad was a lumberjack, uh, two years of grammar school, and it was amazing. He was a very smart man. My mom was well educated. She was uh, a school teacher and an artist. And uh, she also gave birth to 11 children and uh, 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 you know, six girls and five boys. Okay, next. Next, okay. This is Saratoga Harness Track. We're gonna go a little further. How am I doing? Okay. Uh, okay. This this is a an oil painting of Saratoga Harness Track, but it's not really accurate. I don't know who did it. The reason I'm putting it here is because it does show how the track looked before we did our work. And you see, these were canvas roofs. The clubhouse was one floor. Uh, the owner wanted to uh, put permanent roofs. But see, the problem here was uh, the racing was like three or four months. Uh, it, it, and it always had to be good weather. It was very expensive to maintain these canvas roofs. So he said, I want permanent roofs, and I want the thing enclosed. And I wanted everything heated and the clubhouse air conditioned. And I had another floor on a clubhouse for a kitchen and everything. So that was, that was our job. So, uh, and then he says, uh, remember that we're here to make money. I don't see, yeah, uh, right. Uh, and uh, you, we, we close in September and we open in June. So we'll close when you guys are ready, our drawings and everything, and open in June. That is very important. Now this is a lot of work to do in uh, six, seven months, seven months. So, okay, so next. So the first thing that we worked out is the windows. How do you enclose the windows? So uh, here are the steel columns, some of them existing, some of them are too weak, we had to reinforce and everything. And then we put three uh, sheets of glass here, it weighs a couple of tons, uh, three eighths inch glass, and uh, we, uh, we stacked them into the planter here. This, this planter with flowers is something they always had, it's like the striped roof, I had to preserve that. So it, it, it'll come down inside the planter. You see, this is on its way down, and this is almost there. This one is all the way down. So, uh, oh, the roof. We, we uh, crowned all the, uh, the eaves of the roof with copper, and uh, you, you spend a lot of money when you're working with tracks, and we work with a lot of tracks, and they have money, ma foi. Okay. Uh, so here, you see, they have, uh, we abstracted a sulky and a horse, see, so that I would ad identify uh, the, uh, the track. Okay, next. This is an idea of what, there's a hundred people here, and uh, uh, we're moving out. And uh, I awarded, I recommended to the owner, we don't award, I recommended to the owner that they uh, get a cost plus because it'd be hard to fix a price on such a short time with such a big job. So he did that. So now they're moving out flat, and uh, Steve uh, did most of this work. Uh, now, in here, there was a fellow here in November. He fell off the scaffold, hit the one below, broke his back, and died. So that was, that was really sad. They, they closed the building, which meant a lot to the track for one day. And uh, here's a contractor and the guy with the bow ties next to him. Okay, go next. 
Uh, oh, here's the, the uh, track. I don't really like this picture, but, uh, but it shows the uh, clubhouse enclosed, the second floor added, the grandstand enclosed, and uh, okay, next. Right. And here's an aerial view, again, the clubhouse. Right. It was a big project. Okay, next. Right. Now, uh, St. John's, St. Anne's Church. Okay. Now, St. John, St. Anne's Church, is, that's in Albany. Uh, Father Hayes hired us for that. And uh, see here, uh, he brought me in the church with some of the board members and, uh, and pointed out that these columns were all getting out of wind. Uh, there was, they were rotting down in the bottom here. And he said, something had to be done. I said, right, either that or you've you got to walk out. Uh, because, no, it was dangerous. So uh, he said, now, as you approach this, there's one, I don't want to stop mass. I want to have the, the mass uh, uh, every, every uh, on, on the Sundays. Uh, in the chapel, he would uh, uh, have mass during the, during the day. So uh, the challenge here is to uh, uh, repair or remove these columns. He wants to form a, uh, uh, a larger open space, more of a community type of thing. And uh, uh, there's less stress on the axial uh, uh, use of a church, which is common today. I don't know how good that is, but anyway, it's supposed to pray, and never mind that. But... Uh, uh, so, so this is the, the uh, let's see, yeah, this is the, uh, the existing uh, altar. They wanted to move, and, uh, to design a new altar here, and, and this is the balcony, okay, the rear of the building. So you see what we did is uh, we came out with a, a put a, see, there's two columns uh, that have been removed, we put one column in here, and with, uh, you know, like this, uh, we got on to the existing columns and hooked them on that way. That way, we could work in the basement, get all the footings done and everything, cut a hole in the floor, which is no big deal, and then uh, this would come in from the steel uh, people and, uh, and uh, it, it could be installed in a day because there's a hole there. And they stripped the columns. The, this is the existing column that was done in those churches in the 1800s. This is a, a full 12 by 12 wood column. You know, a lot of people think they're stone. Well, that, that, that's wannabe, you know. Okay. Uh, so there, this is the, the solution we use. And uh, the existing altar... Uh, they wanted to leave it there, but have it as a praying, uh, meditation room. So we just put glass in the front. See, kind of, this is golden plate glass with no frames, just glued in a triangular way. And, uh, okay. Uh, now you see it on a side. You see how... We're starting to open the space. One, two, three, four co columns missing, and just two coming in. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, Bart. This is just a sketch, but it shows the service as, as the architect proceeds. The first thing you do is you talk to the owner. He tells you what he wants, what he doesn't want, and... Uh, 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 what he likes, doesn't like, and ask you to present solutions. So uh, Mary Lee and I, we went to uh, uh, Montreal on a, on a long weekend. And uh, in, uh, while I was there in my room, I sketched that out. That's the beginning of a dream. But you saw what it is. You see, oh, you know, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. But, and, you know, that's, that's what you call the schematic. Uh, part of the uh, thing. Okay, next. And uh, see, this is the way we got a hold of this column. Tremendous force coming down here, 
And through bolting here was not sufficient in bearing because the diameter of the bolt is not big enough. So we used shearings in there and picked up the uh, load, and that was no problem. That really went quick. Next. And uh, this is the Black Madonna. They love the Black Madonna. Yeah. Told me to save it. Okay. Next. Okay. Now, this is, uh, oh, this is the architectural services. And, uh, you know, what do we charge? Well, uh, there's different ways. It can be a lump sum. It can be an hourly thing. But we use mostly a percentage of cost. And this uh, is the the uh, thing that uh, we work with. The schematic, which you just saw there, uh, that 15%, and then the design development, the model and everything else, 20%. 40% is the, the highest because that's the working drawings and specifications. And then 5% for bidding and negotiations, and then 20% uh, uh, for construction supervision. Uh, oh. No, go back. This is a, uh, it, this is a, uh, uh, in the back stretch in Saratoga. This is the president of uh, Saratoga, uh, Dave Morris, and the guy with the bow tie. And then uh, here is the, uh, uh, the project that he asked us to do. It's a, it's a grandstand for the employees on the back stretch of the track. Next. Next. Uh, okay, Sarah, uh, the Albany Law School. Uh, the Albany Law School uh, th that Leo Biagiotti I mentioned, this is his dad. Uh, uh, his dad bought uh, Patterson and Henderson, I guess it was the name of the firm that, that he bought. It was, they, they didn't keep the word Biagiotti. Uh, so uh, the, uh, here, uh, uh, the, uh, what what the law school people wanted is they wanted two large classrooms, two different uh, spaces for faculty and, uh, and, uh, employ uh, and uh, student uh, areas for some partial library and, and activities like that. And an enclosed area if, uh, if you had to travel from one building to the other. I did not want to integrate uh, or, or extend the existing law school. Uh, I thought the building was kind of halfway decent, and uh, we ought to leave it there, and it's in the forest, uh, you know. So uh, I, I chose to, to bring them out, and I'm showing here a, a, a one of the large classrooms. That was a big deal, these large classrooms. You would. Uh, you would have like 150 or 125 students in here to lecture. So we really went to town here and designed these walls to reduce the uh, reverberation of sound and then the back wall to uh, absorb it and, and, and did quite a job. And it really worked good. You know, uh, that law school might have been this big and you could stand here and talk and of course the floor steps down and, and uh, nobody shouted or anything, so it worked pretty good. Okay, next. Uh, okay, this is your enclosed, one of the enclosed areas, uh, walk going from one classroom to the other. Next. Yeah, next. This is uh, a, a sculpture from uh, Bob Blood, uh, who worked with us quite a bit, uh, uh, including the racetrack that we just saw, he, he had the gargoyles there, the horse uh, face. This, he does this out of copper, uh, and uh, he called this the bursting seed. I thought that was pretty good for, uh, for a, a law school, and, and I wish they listened to that. Uh, so, and then there was a pool of water down here. Uh, but incidentally, Bob, I don't know if anybody knew him, but he just died uh, the 1st of December, I think. Yeah. But he was a good friend of ours. I, uh, oh, I have a, uh, a building coming up. It's St. Helens, just quickly. And uh, uh, so 
we, we were very close, uh, Mary Lee and I, and and uh, Bob and uh, his partner. Uh, so uh, he, uh, let's see, I, I got so many things in my head that everything, what was I going to say? Uh, well, maybe it'll come to me later, next. Okay, and here's the enclosed area and the two large classrooms. Next. Now, this is a model when we proposed this. The dean, Dean Hessen, uh, he, uh, he's the one that, that made the program for the architect. And uh, we, uh, we submitted that, and he, he said he wanted this. These are the two large classrooms. This is, fat, uh, this is student and faculty areas covered ways on both sides. And, and then oh, heavy remodeling in here. Uh, oh, this is what I want to say. Uh, when we met the dean, he said, I don't know whether our schedule, they wanted to double the facility for the law school. So he said, I don't know whether it would be cheaper to take this law school down and build a new one or sell the building and buy another site. So I'm thinking, you know, well, if you sell the building, buy another site, then you start to get a lot of competition. I got this one here pretty much in my pocket. <laughs> so, so, and, and it, historically, it's a building. So uh, we, we told them that uh, probably the ideal thing would be to remodel it. And that's the way, that's the route we took.